think the, uh, they want us to sort of hold the kiss for quite a bit so they can do a, a soft dissolve thing on the shot. Are you up to it? <laughs> Cue the music. It's all right now. Uh, Miss Quattro, you, you'll be able to kiss me now. It's just all right. Uh, yeah. Um, listen, I was just checking this, these lyrics. You changed a line here. It says, and then he kissed me on the tits. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fine. Excuse me one moment, Miss Susie Quattro. Excuse me, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. How much did she cost? I, 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 don't, I don't know offhand. My personal filmed piece at the end of the show. Well, I'm terribly sorry about this, Miss Quattro, but you'll, you'll have to go. Uh, I'm sorry about this, because I'm hoping to do this personal piece at the end of the, ah, end of the show. I see, and that would be a, a sort of fitting high point on which to end the series, having, as it were, mimetically stretched the form of the sketch show. Well, entirely, you see, and he just, just doesn't appreciate this. <laughs> Didn't know just what to do. I whispered I loved you. He said that he loved me too. <laughs> This sounds stupid, but I've become convinced that Emma is having an affair with Rob. Now, I know you think I'm wrong, but I've accused her and she denies it as if I'm definitely wrong, but... Newman, uh, I did have a word with Mr. Bloody Bub about having <laughs> more speaking parts and, and not being the stunt double, but nothing seems to have happened. Uh, I am a character actor of some standing. Well, certainly in the Western Supermare area. Uh, I understand, and you know, we appreciate that you're only doing it for your daughter, but there's yeah, the money. But her and... dialysis machine is very expensive to run. I don't understand why, because for £100,000 best interest to the loan sharks, well, I expected her to come home with a room full of machinery. But it's marvellous. It's quite a small machine, battery-powered. <laughs> Only makes a slight buzzing noise. <laughs> and here's the queer thing, Mr Newman. It looks like nothing so much as a plastic penis. <laughs> uh, what, you mean a bit like a vibrator? Yes. Only this is a dialysis machine, and... <laughs> anyway, uh, I've got to go now, cos I'm uh, just playing uh, myself as an older man on occasion, my ruby wedding oh, anniversary... but Mr Newman, that... I can play you. I played you in that scene where you were run over by a hovercraft. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK, hold on a sec. 
Um, is that all right if Albert does me in the next scene? Yeah. Oh, OK. You can do the next scene. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I won't let you down. Well, this will help pay for you a... <laughs> Isn't this lovely, darling? And to think, darling, I almost didn't go into that bar. And we would never have met. And now we've been together for 40 years. And do you know a happier... Oh, God. <laughs> now, there is no need for 40% of all ruby wedding anniversary accidents <laughs> to happen. <laughs> now, there was no need for that to happen. <laughs> I am the poltergeist, and the great thing about me is that no one knows I'm here, and so I can wreak my dark work in secret, leaving the mortals to puzzle as to how and why and where. I'm off on tour. Can you feed the cat, please? Me? I'm not doing that. I'm a poltergeist. I have lifted coffins out of the earth, dwelt in thrilling regions of ribbed ice, hurled my soul in fractured atoms against the wind, fought fiery jaws against the angel Gabriel. Here, pussy pussy. Puss, puss. What did your last slave die of? That's what I say. As an epilogue to this story, Julius underwent an experimental operation which doctors felt might normalise his features. A blood transfusion with a very serious person. <laughs> Maybe because deep down in Julius's core of being there is something fundamentally and unalterably stupid, Julius had an allergic reaction. <laughs> I do not look stupid. I do not look stupid. Helen, meanwhile, has found love with a normal builder and was recently voted pin-up of the year by the magazine Reader's Wives. <laughs> but Julius, shunned by the restricted seriousness support group for selling out, spends his days alone in his flat, despairing of ever finding a girlfriend and thinking back over the few moments of passion and tenderness he enjoyed with Helen. Good evening and welcome to History Today. Tonight we will be endeavouring to establish a cogent idea of British civic life, our institutions and so forth, from pre-Roman times to our own. Professor Lewis, I wonder if you would agree with radical Celtic historians that the notion of a centralised bureaucracy is essentially alien to the British character. Indeed, although the essential flux which informs us nebulous a term as character means that this theory topples over like a fallen tree. And that's what you did when you had your BCG. <laughs> I don't care about anything you say today, because tomorrow I'm going to Marine World in Brighton. <laughs> yeah, in a special bus. <laughs> and you can't even go to the toilet on your own. And the driver's on, like, strict instructions not to go over three miles per hour <laughs> in case you get scared. Even if that were the case, which it is not, it still remains the fact that it is I who am going to Brighton Marine World and not you. So, if we may return to the discussion in hand, I wonder if I might inquire, Professor Lewis, whether, all things considered, you have been to Brighton Marine World. <laughs> British civic development changed its course radically with the Great Fire of London, after which there was the opportunity to restructure and recodify the way records were kept. So that as tiny a spark in as lowly a place as Pudding Bowl Lane... That's where you have your hair cut. <laughs> it is not until the 19th century... And you eat your dinner in snot and bogey pie, haven't you? <laughs> you need special medicine to live. 
I'm the one going to Brighton Marine World. <laughs> it is, of course, possible to achieve an exact dating for such artefacts. Uh, this coin, for example, is quite clearly inscribed with the letters C-L-M-X-I-I. -I. I have observed the abscription. Which is your best ever spelling of climax. <laughs> See a whelk stall outside a South London pub. Oh, yes, yes. And it's got to be about five o'clock on a hot Saturday afternoon. And all that's left on the display tray are a few sorry-looking jelly deals, one whelk, and a couple of dried-up, shriveled prawns. I have observed such a roadside establishment. That's Brighton Marine World. <laughs> Another night in on my own. Hey. I'll just uh, play that answer phone message from Rachel again. Hello, Rob. This is Rachel. I'm just returning your call. Because now you see there's hope. hope. No f***ing way. <laughs> so I just got a bit tense there. I'll just do some uh, painting to calm down. So, faced with all this futility, I decided to go to Acapulco. <laughs> so, as I was saying, another night in on my own, and, uh, uh, yeah, it occurred to me that there is a world elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, the, the hidden aquamarine landscape. Shit, um, anyway, so this bloke goes into a pub and orders a cheese and pickle sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last time I saw my first love's face. Even though it was over a decade ago, it still haunts me. There in the hospital grounds, her face. An infinitely gentle, infinitely suffering thing. <laughs> I remember I walked back towards her. People say I'm a cynic and a sneerer, but if they only knew how tender, delicate and poetic this moment was. Oh, David, I know I'm not going to survive this operation, and I know you know that too. Yes, I feel like the world has stopped. Oh, God, don't leave me. Just then, like a hint of the vast sweeping forces of the eternal scheme of wise nature, it began softly to rain. <laughs> Like it does. <laughs> 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 